Can you increase the bandwidth of hamstick antennas? What size battery should you use for portable ham radio operations? And coaxial cable. How long is too long? This time on Mailbag Monday. What's happening, everyone? Thanks for tuning in to KMRD Radio Stuff. My name is Mike. If you have an amateur radio-related question for me, shoot me an email, k8mrd at icloud.com, and you just may have one of your questions featured. On an episode of Mailbag Monday, we have three fabulous questions today for us. So let's dive right in. This first viewer is asking, uh, after 60 years of doing ham stuff, I'm finally adding Poda to my bucket list. Well, better late than never. Uh, not doing stuff halfway, I did get an 891, some Bioenos, LDG tuner, and various other accessories, including several ham tennis. My question is using the MFJ ham tennis, I'm assuming he's using, meaning ham stick, on 20 and 15 work great and have great bandwidth, but 40 and 80 are so high Q that 80 is almost worthless. Some would argue that 80 is worthless to begin with. <laughs> I was hoping to not run counterpoise all over uh, for other ground mounts. So do you have any suggestions for getting more bandwidth? Yes, I do. More counterpoise. <laughs> um, when, when you get down to uh, 80 and 40 meters with a, with a ham stick antenna like those, uh, they're, they're going to be notoriously high Q, especially 80 meters. 40, you, you might could get uh, a little bit a little bit of bandwidth out of, but <sighs> counterpoise wires are going to be your friend. That's that's the that's the compromise when you use an antenna like that. They're, you you've you've got to make a compromise somewhere. So adding more counterpoise wire to a certain extent should help that. Now, uh, another thing you might could do, I, I don't know if you, is this on your car? Uh, he didn't say if it's on his car, uh, just ground mount. Uh, so just talking about different ground mounts. So um, Michael KB9VBR has, has really repopularized the idea of using a screen for your counterpoise. And it seems to be pretty darn effective. Now, I don't know what that's done for bandwidth. Maybe someone in the comments uh, might know that, but that might be something you could look at, uh, like legit a window screen, like a mesh metal screen uh, that you get at the hardware store. Put that underneath uh, and connect it to the ground as opposed to connecting radials. Uh, and because there's just so much wire there, that does seem to be a better solution than adding a lot more counterpoise wires. Now, quite a few people have asked me if I'm going to try that. I'm kind of leaning towards no. It just isn't conducive to my style of operating. I mean, imagine taking a freaking screen out. You got this big roll of screen. You're going to unroll it. Then you got to roll it back up or fold it. And it, it's just not portable for me. But that might actually do the trick and solve your problem of not wanting to put out more uh, counterpoise wires. I get it. You have a whole field of wire there. It, it gets rather unruly. So maybe look at that screen. Check out Michael KB9 VBR um, and and see what his screen antenna thing. Like literally everybody is is doing it now. Like that. It's it's the thing that everybody's copying, um, and and rightfully so. It 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 seems to work pretty well. So uh, give a screen a shot and let us know how it works. But thanks for writing in. Next, we have a question about one of my favorite topics, batteries. This viewer is asking, uh, I'm pretty sure you've used your 7300 for POTA. Yes, I do. Quick question when you get a minute, what amp hour size LifePo4 battery do you think would be the minimum for field day in POTA? I can do the maths and make a rough calculation, but given all the practical experience you have, I thought it best to write and get your thoughts. Thanks for your help. So great question. And uh, the official answer to this is, well, it depends. So yes, I use a 7300. That is my primary uh, portable radio now. Uh, and I'll say I'll, I'll lump in the 891 with this because just kind of sitting there turned on, they both draw about an amp just on receive. So you, you, need, to, you need to think about what mode are you going to be running? CW, data, phone. How long are you going to be out there? And how much power are you running? So I'm going to assume you're talking running 100 watts on uh, uh, the 7300 or the 891. The, the bare minimum 
to really get out and have any. I, I started out with a 10 amp hour battery, but um, I built mine. This is a 12 amp hour battery from Bioeno. Nice, pretty compact. I mean, it, it fits in your hand there. And just with your radio turned on, this will pretty much keep your radio on for about 12 hours. Now, once you start transmitting, that's going to go down significantly. Uh, to put it into perspective, every Tuesday night when the Ham Radio Clubhouse does their live stream, I'm sitting on my porch doing FT8. Generally, I'm running between 50 and 70 watts on FT8, and I usually use about 10 amp hours of current. So to put that into perspective, with a high duty cycle like FT8, two hours, 10 amps of current. Uh, a, a really good kind of sweet spot for batteries would be a 20 amp hour battery. So again, your radio just turned on, not just receiving about 20 hours. So in terms of like half power FT8, about four hours in the field. Now, when you're talking sideband, uh, double those at least. So if, if you want to go and do sideband at the park and you want to be out there all day, I'm also assuming no solar to augment this, uh, a 20 amp hour would be pretty darn good. If you want to, if you want to really push it and, and just not have to worry if you're, if you're legit going to be out there all day and you want to go balls to the wall, sideband all day, maybe think about a 30 amp hour battery. If you're out there all weekend, this is this is kind of silly for one person, but maybe a hundred amp hour battery. But to put it into perspective, uh, over field day, just over the weekend, we were running three radios off of my 300 amp hour battery. And now we weren't going real hard. Field day is more about uh, just hanging out and, and you know the camaraderie. Uh, but we were going pretty hard on FT8. Uh, on Saturday, we really didn't do any operating on Sunday, uh, but we ended up using, I just charged my battery and I put about 130 amps into it, 130 amp hours into it when we were using three radios, 100 watts, FT8 and phone, working pileups and stuff. So uh, really, I would say like a 20 amp or a 30 amp, depending on how much weight you want to spend, it, it's, it's, it's kind of tough. How long do you want to be out there? What? I, how much weight do you want to carry? And what mode are you using? You know, if you're going to be doing CW or digital all day long, 30 amps should be fine. If you're just going to do sideband for an hour, 12 amps is fine. If you want to go that, that 20 amp hours is kind of that sweet spot. So uh, there's my two cents. But thanks so much for writing in and allowing me to talk about batteries because I love batteries. <laughs> This last question has to do with another thing that I love talking about, which is coax. He's asking, uh, my question to you, is there a limit on the length of coax that goes to the radio? So I thought that was an interesting question. Uh, we, we've talked a lot about coax loss and, and DBs and things, but we've never really looked at, you know, what, what would be the limit. So uh, before diving into that, I, I do want to show a couple websites. The first of which being ABR Industries, and I have discounts for both of these guys, but if we go to abrind.com and go to data sheets, here you can scroll through all of their different cables and get and get a little more information on them uh, in terms of losses. So here we can see the loss at 100 feet of power for their different varieties. Here's ABR 400, which is LMR for uh, LMR 400. Here's their version of RG213. Here's their version of LMR240, which is same size, but a little bit better than RG8X. And here's ABR316, which is RG316. Just some common uh, uh, coax for ham radio. And here you can see the losses at 100 feet for the frequencies. So here we can see like LMR400 has 3.3 dB a loss or approximately half your signal at UHF. Uh, here we can see with RG316, we have 17 dBs of loss, uh, <laughs> which is, and this is saying short runs under 25 feet for 450 megahertz. So uh, they can get quite lossy. So there, so coax companies have these charts to help you understand. Same thing with Messi and Poloni. You can go to MNP uh, or Messi.it, click on their data sheets, and that'll bring you to this page here. And you can download all the different uh, info you want. So like Ultraflex 7 is kind of comparable in size 
to uh, like RG8X. And here you can see uh, their dB in loss and then in meters and in feet. You can take a look at that and compare. Um, you can also go to, where is it? They have a calculator. If you go to the top and where it says compare coax, go to this compare values and create your own coax. And in here, you can play around with everything. So let's say Airborne 10, that's like the Mama Chapina of LMR 400, we'll call it. And let's change this length to 100 feet. And let's say 30 megahertz and calculate. And here you get all the all the information in terms of what that coax is going to do to you. But to answer your question, what will it take <laughs> to lose all your power? So let's uh, let's pick on LMR 400. Why not? It's it's kind of everybody says, oh, get LMR 400, get LMR 400. Which it's a great cable. At 14 megahertz, we have a hundred percent loss uh, at a hundred feet. So what happens if we go to a thousand feet and hit calculate? We get 66% loss. So let's change frequencies now. Uh, let's say we want 1,000 feet at 2 meters. Now <laughs> we're losing 97% here. <laughs> 15 dB a loss. Uh, let's go back to 100 feet, but uh, for 440 megahertz, uh, we lose 47%. So let's say... Uh, we want a thousand feet at 440. We're gonna lose a hundred percent. Well, 500 feet. What does that do? 95 percent of our power is lost uh, <laughs> for LMR 400 at 500 feet at uh, at two to uh, at at 440. So uh, let's see. Let's go back to 14 megahertz. How much coax would we need to lose our power uh, for 20 meters? Like it, it's going to take a lot, but so here's a thousand feet. What happened? We lost 66%. So 1500 feet, your tower is going to be far away. 80%. Let's try 2000 feet. 88%. 3000 feet. 96. 4000 feet. 99. <laughs> we still got one watt going. <laughs> Let's try five. Here, let's try 5,280 feet. There's one mile of LMR 400. We finally lose all of our power at 14 megahertz with 100 watts. So uh, there you go. <laughs> it takes one mile to get rid of all 100 watts at 14 megahertz. But... <laughs> So yeah, use those tools online. All the coax manufacturers are going to tell you what their stuff does. You got to figure out your run, figure out what frequencies, what power, all that stuff. What, you know, what, what gain does your antenna have? The bottom line is get, use the shortest run you can of the best coax you can afford. That's really the best advice uh, that you'll ever get about coax. And guys, if you have an amateur radio related question for me, Shoot me an email, k8mrd at iCloud.com. And we will see you again on another episode of K8MRD Radio Stuff. 73, guys.